Today I want to discuss the simplest way to recognize false teachers who pervert the word and the instructions of our Creator. Moses records Yahweh instructing us in Deuteronomy 4, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which Yahweh Elohim of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim which I command you. In Deuteronomy 12, we read, Whatsoever, What things soever I command you, observe to do it, that thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. These verses tell us plainly that we ought not to add to the instructions given to us, nor take away from them. It is very straightforward. If we examine mainstream Christianity, we find that they have taken away or removed nearly every instruction that was given to us in the books of the law. Judaism has also taken away from the law, and both have certainly added to it in many ways by adding in their own ideas and their own traditions. In Matthew 5, Yeshua tells his disciples, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. People want to twist this verse and use it to say, See, he fulfilled the law. Is that what it says? No, here's the Strong's definition for the Greek word translated in this verse as fulfilled. It's the Greek word 1096. It's a prolongation in a middle voice form of a primary verb to cause to be. To become, it's used with great latitude. You can pause the video here and look at all the different ways that uh, the King James um, translated the word into other words, but point out a few, to, to be, to happen, to be made. And this is the same word that's translated in John chapter 1 as the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I want to give you an example of a scripture where this word is used with another Greek word that has a closer meaning to the English word fulfill. But of course, even in English, the word fulfill has a broad variety of meanings. But in Matthew 1, it says, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. And that second um, word there for fulfilled is 4137, playru. It um, can mean to cram, like to cram a net, or to, to execute, or to verify. And you can see there the uses that the King James um, translates it as well. But I want to interject that I did find um, in Spiros of Zedites, uh, word study that it states that the Greek word used for fulfilled in Matthew 5, 17 is uh, the Greek word pleru, but that really makes little difference when we simply choose to believe what Yeshua says as he continues to teach his disciples in the following verses. And after all, as we see, the word can literally mean to cram full, as in cramming a net full, or to verify, etc. Anyway, it is most dangerous to believe that the law was fulfilled if we simply continue to listen and we desire to have ears to hear as Yeshua continues to teach in, in the next verse even. This is most important and we cer certainly should want to make sure since after all what we believe to be true is what our faith is in. If our belief or our faith is in a lie or something that is false, then our faith is false. It becomes obvious, like I said, in the following verse, Yeshua continues, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot, one tittle, nor one tittle shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. It's the, you know, the dotting of an I, or crossing of a T. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments, and teach men so, he shall be called, or spoken of, as least in the kingdom of heaven. The Greek word for fulfilled in, in, in verse 18 is 1096 in both the Strong's and, and Zodiac's word study, which shows uh, has a wide variety of meanings, but most assuredly it means to be made to be or brought to pass. So clearly the law remains until heaven and earth as we know it pass away, which is when Yahweh will send his son to you know, bring all things in subjection to his, his perfect will. He goes on to make it even clearer. But whosoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called or spoken of great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is a powerful magnification of the law. The Pharisees were pretty righteous, at least from their own perspective and on a physical plane. In any case, Yeshua is speaking to his disciples in that famous teaching um, on the Sermon on the Mount, instructing them to take on his perfect, holy, righteous character, the character of his father that he himself represented. He's, from there, he goes on to magnify the law even further, as he always did in his teachings. Or you could say that he goes on to render the nets full with the law. 
Ye have heard it in Matthew 5, ye have heard it, next verse, ye have heard it that it was said by them of old time that ye shall not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire, the final, final judgment, the lake of fire. What did Isaiah prophesy about this in regards to Yeshua? In chapter 42, Seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, but he heareth not. And Yahweh is well pleased for his righteous estate. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Go back to verse 1 and the subsequent verses. You see Isaiah is talking about one of Elohim's servants that would be sent to make the law honorable and to magnify it. This is what Yeshua did. He came the first time to magnify the law and he will return and restore all truth and render the law perfect. Continuing on, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil. None saith restore. Are you going to be, will continue to be one of them that don't want truth restored and continue to listen to the false teachings of men? Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear the, for the time to come? The time to come is, is now. At, at this point, it is a pretty starch warning, but there is hope. We can change. We can repent. We can allow our Creator to restore what is true in our minds and be engrafted eventually into His family. If we read the verses preceding this passage, we can see that it's his design to do so. He's going to, he, he's, he's going to, there's going to be people that he won't forsake. So, but anyway, we've rejected his word for 6,000 years, all but those few who have yielded to his perfect will. They will back up in verse 14. And, I have a long time holding my peace. I have been still. I have refrained myself. He's held back. Now though I will cry like a travailing woman, I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills that dry up all our herbs, and I will make the rivers islands, and I will dry up the pools, and I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. This is where it gets to be good news. I will lead them in the paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before men and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed, though, that they trusted in graven images. But they say to the molten images, ye are gods. Many of you out there are living in denial and you say that you don't have molten images as your gods. or It's just, talk, he's talking about idolatry. And, and if you put your trust in anything besides your creator, whether it be your jobs or your false religious practices that are based on lies, you put your trust in something other than him. And out of your mouth you say you trust him, but your actions show something different. They show what your faith is in. It is time to throw out the idolatry and be led by his word. Truth is being restored as he is preparing the people to live into a new age. The world is just about to go through the calamity spoken of in verse 14 when he said, Now I will cry like the travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. He is going to humble all mankind who has rejected his truth. And, and those who have chosen to believe the lies of men who teach not the commandments and the precepts that he gave us. Those are false teachers and he clearly identifies them in his word. The identifying marks are just clearly the failure to teach the commandments and the precepts of Yahweh Elohim, those who either add to them or take away from them or twist them. If we continue on with one of the verses discussed in this video about not adding to or diminishing from his commandments back in Deuteronomy 13, there, if there rise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth ye a sign or a wonder, and that sign or wonder come to pass even, Wherefore he spake unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. Let us serve them. And talking today about people who, it looks good. They show up on the stage, it's good. You know, the, you know, the music and everything. And it's real, real, real things happen out there. Satan is busy working through their ministries. There's no doubt. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh your Elohim proveth you to know whether you love him him with all your heart and all your soul. His commandments are there to, to test us, to, to prove us, to see if we're going to love him and love his ways. You know, if we forsake him, of course, we show him. We, if you say you, you know Yahweh and you keep not his commandments, you're a liar. You know, So it's just clear in scriptures. You shall walk after Yahweh your Elohim and fear him. If we fear him, we're going we're gonna to fear going against him. And keep his commandments and obey his voice that you shall serve him and cleave unto him, cleave unto his ways. 
And that prophet or dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahweh your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out in the way which Yahweh Elohim commanded you to walk in. So shalt thou put evil from the midst of you. If thy brother, thy son of thy mother, thy, thy son, thy daughter, the wife of thy bosom, thy friend, which is in thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, nor thy fathers have known. Namely, the gods of the people which are round about you. They're everywhere. Every church, every street corner, whether it's, 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 it's I won't get into the days of worship and stuff in this video, but it's just, it's, um, the perversions are, are, are everywhere lurking. Satan has truly deceived the world. Nigh unto you, or far off from you, and from one end of the earth unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto them nor hearken to him, neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither thou shalt conceal him. These people need to be exposed, you know, too. They don't uh, just turn the other cheek and need to know they're false teachers. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust you away from Yahweh your Elohim, which brought you forth from out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. And all the house of Israel shall hear and fear. That's the whole thing about purging out evil, because it, that everybody would fear to, 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 to partake in evil. They shall do no more such wickedness as, as this is among you. I hope you're hearing this. El Shaddai is saying that taking you away from his statutes and his commandments is pure wickedness. Did his son come with the same message? Absolutely. In Matthew 7, Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I'm going to be talking more about some of those, those false prophets, but there's certainly anyone that takes you away from the commandments of, of your Creator. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Well, we're going to find out a couple of verses later what their fruits are. Lawlessness. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Disobedient fruit. A, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. Again, speaking of that final lake of fire. Wherefore, by your fruits you shall know them. And of course, you're keeping the commandments. I mean, the fruits there of love and all of those things are all the commandments come to life. And your life is beautiful and, and perfect. And, uh, and it, but it's it's not based on our own righteousness. Not everyone, he continues on to say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, or his commandments that are forever, are they his will? Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils and in your name done many wonderful works? See, they're doing good deeds. But it isn't just good deeds. That's, he's certainly clearing that, clearing the way that it's more than, than just good deeds. And then will I profess unto them, he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. This is a big, big statement here because iniquity here is translated from the Greek word anomia. It is violation of the law, Yahweh's law. It is wickedness. Sin is transgression of the law, 1 John 3, 4. It's very clear. It's the clearest Bible definition of sin. If you can find a different definition of it, then, and then show it to me. The fruit that Yeshua is talking about here is keeping the law, just as he always taught and magnified. Anyone who does otherwise is a false prophet or a false teacher or a false minister, dressed in it like a sheep but they are ravenous wolves he explains this clearly if we want to stop listening to the lies that we've been taught and we've grown up with from these false teachers who've taken us away from living by every word that's proceeded from the mouth of Yahweh Elohim and, and start hearkening unto his words in Matthew 4 Yeshua says he answered to Satan it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim Yahweh Elohim and Deuteronomy 8 he's where he's quoting that from and he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might, he might make you know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh doth man live. 